Thomas Becket is possibly the most famous churchman in English history. The son of a London merchant, he rose to prominence as the Royal Chancellor to Henry II, and then Archbishop of Canterbury, only to be murdered in his cathedral church. Becket was born in Cheapside in London in 1119 or 1120. His father was a successful textile merchant. The family owned a large house in Cheapside's more prosperous area and several other London properties. Becket's father even served a term as sheriff of the city. This wealth meant that Becket could be sent to be educated at the Augustinian Priory at Merton in Surrey. Later, he was put into one of the London grammar schools and aged 20, even spent a year studying in Paris. Although Becket's education was largely conducted by the church, there is no evidence to suggest that his parents had intended for their only son to join the clergy, or that Becket felt a calling for the priesthood. In later life, Becket's father suffered heavy financial losses, and his London properties were destroyed in a fire. With this decline in the family fortunes, Becket's father was forced to become a clerk, and went to work in the banking house of Osbert Hout Deniers, one of the greatest London merchants of the day. Becket also worked here as a clerk between 1143 and 1145, before he managed to secure a position in the household of Theobald, Archbishop of Canterbury. Theobald saw Becket's potential and sent him to study law for a year in Bologna and Auxerre. Following this, Becket was employed on missions to the Papal Curia, St Peter's in Rome. In 1154, when Theobald secured the Archbishopric of York for his current archdeacon, he gave the now vacant Archdeaconry of Canterbury to Becket. During this time, Becket also accumulated other benefices, that is, church offices, including Bramfield in Hertfordshire, St Mary Le Strand in London, Otford in Kent, Prebens in London and Lincoln Cathedrals, and the Provostship of Beverley in Yorkshire. Becket was steadily becoming rich, and at the age of 34, he was ready for greater things. Becket was probably involved in the negotiations, led by Theobald, which secured the succession of Henry Plantagenet to the English throne after King Stephen's death in 1154. And shortly after Henry II's coronation, we find royal charters bearing Becket's name as the King's Chancellor. The royal chancellorship was essentially a clerkship, but the most prestigious clerkship you could hope to hold, giving unrivalled access to the crown. In his hands, and by becoming Henry's intimate friend, Becket was able to transform the chancellorship into an important office of state, and his wealth and influence increased further. Then, on the 18th of April, 1161, Theobald, the Archbishop of Canterbury, died, and both Henry and Becket saw an opportunity. All Archbishops of Canterbury since the Norman Conquest, except one, had been monks, and the monks of the Cathedral See, Christchurch, claimed sole right of election to the archbishopric. The task of making Becket Archbishop of Canterbury was not going to be an easy one, and there were other candidates better positioned for the role. However, Henry was determined to see Becket elevated from archdeacon to archbishop to support his own agenda. The king was anxious to secure his dynasty by having his eldest son, Henry the Younger, crowned King of England. He also planned to safeguard his vast French inheritance, and even, perhaps, uniting England and France by marrying the young Henry to King Louis VII of France's heir, Margaret. On the 2nd of June, 1162, Becket was made a priest at Canterbury Cathedral, and the following day, bending to pressure from the king, he was consecrated by the monks as archbishop. In a single year, Becket was simultaneously archbishop Archdeacon, Royal Chancellor, and the holder of a large number of ecclesiastical benefices and royal custodies. However, soon after his consecration as Archbishop, Becket stunned and offended Henry by resigning as Royal Chancellor, throwing into doubt Henry's plan to have an Archbishop be his pawn, and setting in motion a train of events that would lead to murder and martyrdom. <laughs>